Hey, welcome back to Lisa Gallimart. Tonight, we are going to tackle this beast of a canvas. Five feet wide, four feet tall, uh, repurposed, so you might see faint glimmers of the painting that used to exist here. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. So after I was finished recording this time lapse and editing it, I did decide that I might come on now after the fact and do a little bit of voiceover for you, just for those of you who are curious about my process. So in the beginning, I'm not thinking whatsoever. My goal is simply to get rid of the white canvas and start some shapes and lines and funky patterns in the background which may or may not end up in the original in this case they absolutely did not end up in the in the final product but that happens a lot with intuitive painting even these these wonderful stencils i'm using here you do not end up seeing in the final painting but the way i paint intuitively is every brush stroke inspires the next brush stroke so that um you're never starting from zero and you don't have a plan so you're reacting to everything that that you do so you do something and then you decide if you like it or not and you react to it now most of that is subconscious i'm not thinking overtly about it um, i'm just i call it decorating i'm just playing and decorating this canvas right now and not worrying whether or not anything's going to survive until the end it's just part of the journey. And the journey is what makes this kind of art, I think, so intriguing. don't very often get to play on such a big canvas so lots of fun um, I'll take you for a little tour um, but this won't be the end of the video I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna add some good stuff So the painting was very busy, so what you see me doing now is using white spray paint to just create a little bit more resting place for the eye. And then sort of trying to bring out a bit of a focal point right here. And as well, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you get some benefit from my content, and hit the bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload new content. I do want to apologize, I have not been uploading as much lately, but that's mainly because I'm moving in three months now, and I've been very busy um, cleaning out my studio, purging the studio, selling art, hosting auctions, all kinds of fun stuff, just trying to liquidate a lot of the art that I've done over the years that has not sold, because I'm far better at playing with paint than I am at marketing. I just think that's a thing with us artists, for sure. But yes, when you subscribe and you comment especially or like my content, that just helps my channel out so, so, so much. So um, yeah, love to have you here as part of the Lisa Gollum Art family. That would be great.
gonna lie, part of me wishes I would have stopped right around here um, because I, I went through a long process with this painting. It morphed and changed quite a few times, as you will see <laughs> as you watch the rest of the video. It does not stay quite like this. Um, once I started trying to do more and more, um, things just didn't always go to my happy place with this one. But that happens a lot. When you paint intuitively, you get to places where you kind of like things, but you know it's not finished. Then you go and you do something else, and then you all of a sudden realize that you don't like it as well, and that would not be what I would say is a mistake. There are no mistakes in art, but I have to like it. And so that's my... Um, litmus paper, if you will. That's that's the test. If I don't like what I'm seeing, then it doesn't matter to me whether anyone else does or anything. I need to make, make some changes. So um, you'll see me doing that with this piece quite a, quite a few times. I did work on this for three weeks. I certainly did not want to have to move this six foot painting to my next studio residence. I really don't have the storage space to store something like this or the wall space for a piece this large. So now you'll see me adding kind of a bluish gray. Um, this is again because I was trying to get a little more neutral and a little more variety of color um, and some some more neutral blues and you know that kind of thing just to create a bit more balance. The painting was pretty looking pretty high chroma in spite of the white spray paint from before to me. So that's what you're seeing me doing. I also did not like that one sort of spike downward of the dark. So that's another reason that I'm putting lights and, and whites and grays there to kind of obliterate that, um, arc, that dark arch that was coming down there. I didn't like the eye being led that way. I wanted it to go more horizontal vibes. So now I'm adding pink for that same reason give it a little more of a rest and direct in the eye. So I'm thinking about, I'm starting to think about composition just a little bit here. So not wanting anything to distract the eye too, too much from the focal point. Although you do need interest elsewhere in the painting, you don't want so much interest everywhere in the painting that the person doesn't know where to look. Now that's partly what you learn as an artist as you develop your talents, but also like anything else in art, it's a rule that we break all the time, very sometimes extremely effectively. So there really is no rules in art, but there are kind of guidelines for things that we know historically and just to the human eye are more pleasing than other things, but there really truly isn't a hard and fast rule for anything. <laughs> Trust me, there is not.
also, I really do love playing with palette knives. Um, they are especially good at adding a little bit of texture and some really dramatic highlights or just areas of interest in the focal area. You'll notice that the further I go from the focal area, the more subtle the marks I'm making. That's intentional. Whether it's subconscious or not, it's, it's, it's something I've learned with from experience that you want more distinct marks where the focal area is and more faded or less distinct marks further away you get from the focal area. It's just a neat way to direct the eye to the areas of high interest. So I'm just playing with knives. Knives also have a neat way with paint of making the paint look less predictable and less distinct, which makes it look a little bit more creative and artsy. So now you're seeing, I, I got this new tool. I have no idea what it is. It's some kind of cleaning tool, I think. And I thought it would be cool to use. I'd never used it before and I absolutely did not like it. And so then I decided to do some um, blurring with a paintbrush with just some water to bring out, to, to just move some of that white that I put on there with a knife. And I ended up doing this way too much. If I'd have maybe stopped around there, it would have been a cool effect but I have a history of going too far with any joke. So I just keep start, start to keep doing, and then I'm adding more, like just taking out more and more of the painting and then going and then doing sun rays. And I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but I'm already, I can tell you as I'm watching myself, I'm cringing at what's happening right now. I mean, it's got some good things going for it, but in general, I'm not happy. And if I ain't happy, it's not gonna stay this way. And I wanted just to come on and show you a little of the footage, um, as well as the first iteration of this painting, which I also didn't like. And just to kind of share with you the fact that the artist's process is not linear. It's not like every painting I make is better than the last one. I mean, I wish that were true. Um, and again, people are gonna comment, I know, and some of my friends especially are gonna say, it doesn't suck, it's fine. It's not what I wanted, it doesn't speak to me. So it's probably not gonna survive the day What you see me playing with here is a putty knife and some modeling paste, which is basically the artist's version of drywall putty. <laughs> In fact, I've used drywall putty as well, um, just doesn't have the longevity and the stability of modeling paste, but it does the same thing. So it's just a neat way to create some nice visual texture, which I'm using to totally obliterate what was once my focal point and hoping that moving forward the new focal point will be something I love more.
also, I do apologize that there was one video that I had thought I recorded and have you ever turned the camera on and off one too many times and when you went to turn it on, you actually were turning it off <laughs> and it had actually recorded the thing that you didn't want and didn't record the thing that you did want? Well, I have, and that's what happened here. So you just missed me sort of putting some color on top of that texture that after it dried. Um, and then now this is the next time I'm going back to the painting and trying to decide what, you know, how to further develop that texture. You see me putting paint on and wiping it off sometimes, and that's because when I put the paint on, it goes in the grooves of the texture really well. And then when you wipe it off with the cloth, you can leave the dark in the, in the grooves and wipe off the surface, and it gives it a really unique sense of depth, which I really love. So yeah, just playing with what I wanna do with the textured area. So a minute ago you saw what I do to get dark color in the grooves of the texture by putting it, the paint on wiping it back off. This is the opposite of that. Now I'm getting, putting light, the lightest colors or the lightest values on the very peaks of that texture using a flat brush with lots of paint on it but a very light touch and almost laying the brush down like parallel to the painting to the canvas and just to get the that color on just on the tops of that texture and again that gives it really great sense of dimension and depth in the painting
here I'm still playing with the value. Um, so I had added lots of white, so now I'm just reclaiming some of the darkest darks by using some Payne's Gray, which for me is my favorite dark to use in most of my paintings, um, because most of my color schemes goes well with Payne's Gray, which is like really, really a dark grayish blue but it's very dark. It looks almost black unless you really look close. It's my favorite ever. Just gives it some nice contrast in tone, in value. So now, I ended up spraying some pink spray paint. Spray paint's a relatively new addition to my studio. And honestly, I overdid it, like I do a lot of times. A lot of back and forth happening because, you know what, I made it too pink and I wasn't happy because pink, I don't dislike pink. You probably see me wear a lot of pink and sometimes there's pink in my hair. But I don't want the painting to be overrun by pink. So then from now on, you'll see me trying to address that by, again, adding now more whites back in and various other things. Again, just following my intuition and sometimes it seems to mislead me or make me go too far with something and then I just have to back up the train a little bit. The nice thing about acrylics, really, is that you can do that. You never really have to be done until you're really done because you can keep adding more and more layers until you get to a happy place. And it also helps you not to be afraid because fear can make be a worse thing. So it's better to make, to do something and then not like it and then have to fi fix it because then you learn something. Um, that is far better than being too afraid to do anything in the first place and have your pieces all kind of boring or look the same or just not taking risks because creativity is all about risk so that is something that maybe I'm too good at but I don't mind risking you know wrecking a painting or whatever because I know that I'm just gonna learn something from it and I can always cover it back up again and back up the train to reclaim what I had before that I liked or go in a completely new direction anytime I want. I am in charge. I am the creator of this universe right here that you see. So there is, never is a mistake, only a part of the process that I don't like. So anyway, now I took pink out, now I'm putting pink back in. So you see the back and forth. But I did want the fluorescence. Now the nice thing about fluorescent paint is it really makes a painting pop and I like to use it sometimes especially at the focal point but I don't always leave it like in the forefront so so I put it on right away then but I'm going to you know um, not leave it completely dominating you know it'll be kind of end up in part of the underpainting under the other colors which by the way if you have fluorescence underneath other colors it will make them pop more it gives them a bit of an illumin illumination that you can't get in another way so so you'll often see me put fluorescent paints on an, um, a painting and then cover them up and there is a method to my madness which you may not be able to quite totally tell on a video but in person, you can.